Time for convening having arrived. The Senate will come to order. And chair recognizes the very distinguished 100 most influential Georgians, Senator from the 53rd. For six years in a row, but who's counting, Mr. President? <laughs> it's a beautiful day in our state capital. The sun's out, and I know glorious things going to happen in this chamber. And the journal's been read and found correct. Thank you, Senator, for your good works on the journal. Is there objection to dispensing with the reading of the journal? The reading of the journal is dispensed with. Is there objection to confirmation of the journal? Chairs, none, and the journal is confirmed. All senators having bills and resolutions to introduce, please bring them to the secretary's desk at this time. First reading in reference of Senate bills and resolutions. Senate Bill 324 by Senator Stone of the 23rd and others. A bill to be entitled an act to amend code section 35. Judy non-civil. Senate Bill 2. Uh, 325 by Senators Albers of the 56 and others. A bill to be entitled an act to amend Title 25 of the OCGA relating to fire protection and safety so as to change provisions relating to regulation of fire protection. Insurance. Senate Bill 326 by Senator Jeffries of the 17th and others. A bill to be entitled an act to amend Code Section 23202 of the OCGA relating to creation of Higher education. Senate Bill 327 and by Senator Albers of the 56 and others. A bill to be entitled an act to amend Title 48 of the OCGA relating to revenue and taxation to a small Finance. Part. Senate Bill 328 by Senators Ford of the 39th and others. A bill to be entitled an act amend Code Section 4518-2 by the OCGA relating to authority. Insurance. Senate. Senate Bill 329 by Senators Wilkinson of the 50th and others. A bill to be entitled an act amend Chapter 2 of Title 20 of the OCGA relating to education elementary. and youth. Senate Bill 330 by Senators Jones of the 25th and others. A bill to be entitled an act amend Subpart 6A of Part 3. Higher education. Senate Resolution 788 by Senators Albers of the 56 and others. A bill. A resolution authorizing the conveyance of certain state-owned real property located. State institution and properties. That completes the order, Mr. President. Secretary will read House bills. House Bill 743 by Senator by Representative Ralston the seventh and others. A bill to be entitled an act amend an act making and providing appropriations for the state fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2013 and ending July, June Appropriations. 30th. That completes the order, Mr. President. Clerk, uh, uh, Secretary Reed reports from standing committees. Mr. President, the Senate Rules Committee has had under consideration the following legislation and has instructed me to report the same back to the Senate with the following recommendation. The Senate Resolution 736 do pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator Mullis of the 53rd District Chairman. That completes the order, Mr. President. Secretary Reed, bills for the second time. Senate Bill 214, Senate Bill 273, Senate Bill 291, Senate Bill 292, Senate Bill 296, Senate Bill 298, Senate Resolution 415, Senate Resolution 746. That completes the order, Mr. President. It is now time for the morning roll call. Time for the morning roll call. Are there any motions to excuse? Chair recognizes Senator on the 56th. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask unanimous consent to excuse the senators from the 40th and the 29th for business outside the Capitol. 40th and 29th, without objection, the two senators will be excused. Chair recognizes distinguished senator from the 5th. Uh, for unanimous c consent to excuse the senator from the 26th for business outside the Capitol. 26th, without objection, the senator from the 26th will be excused. Chair recognizes senator from the 38th. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that we excuse the senator from the 41st for business outside the Capitol. 41st, without objection, the senator from the 41st will be excused. Chair recognizes the senator from the 34th. Good morning, Mr. President. I ask for unanimous consent to excuse the senator from the 36th. She is en route. 36th, without objection, the senator from the 36th will be excused. Are there any other motions to excuse? While I have the Senate's attention, um, let me just say that today is a very, very special day in the life of one of our senators. It is a day in which she celebrates the fact that she's 29 and holding. Please join me in wishing very happy birthday to the senator from the 45th today, 45th. And actually yesterday was another special day in the life of the Senate because we had another senator that was celebrating 
the fact that he was 59 and holding. The senator from the 18th over here. So let's give him a round. <laughs> Not really, not really. You can tell by looking at him, he's, he's still at that 29 and holding, too. All right, now it's time for the morning roll call. All of those in favor, or excuse me, all of those um, that are here will please vote yay. Vote the yay machine. Secretary will unlock the machine. It's now time, now time for our morning devotion. Now time for our morning devotion. I would ask senators to please take your seats and cease conversation at this time as we prepare the chamber for our morning devotion. As uh, all of you are aware, today is our National Guard Day, and uh, it really is a great honor to um, to have them present with us today. Um, and we will have the sender from the fourth that will come and lead us in our pledge and then also introduce our very special chaplain of the day. Senator. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, and now the Georgia flag. I pledge allegiance to the Georgia flag and to the principles for which it stands, wisdom, justice, and moderation. Well, good morning, everybody. This is a spe very special day. And on a special day like this, we have a very special uh, chaplain of the day with us today. Chaplain Captain Andrew C. Parker is a regional care chaplain for the Georgia Army National Guard, and one of the things that he does is to, to mentor uh, those who want to be chaplains in the Guard. But he has a, a career of military service that preceded his becoming a chaplain. He served in the U.S. Air Force for over 10 and a half years uh, as an avionics uh, technician, and then joined the, the Georgia National Guard after uh, he had served as youth pastors and, and gotten his degrees uh, in, in, in theology and, and so forth in preparing himself for, himself for the ministry. He's been a youth pastor and a, and a vocational minister as well. Uh, he uh, has served both down in Moultrie and Valdosta. I know everybody likes to know where people have been so that if you make some connections there as well. Uh, today he's the officer in charge of, of that uh, group that mentors uh, chaplains as well. He's uh, married, has three daughters, and uh, a basically uh, is also a, a adjunct professor uh, at a college nearby in uh, Douglasville. So, uh, we're very proud today to have Chaplain Cap Captain Andrew C. Parker as our chaplain of the day. Chaplain. Well, thank you, Mr. President of the Senate, Senator Hill, and members of the Senate, fellow guardsmen, thank you for being here today. Thank you for giving me the privilege to share a few thoughts with you. There's a principle found in Scripture in the Gospel according to Luke chapter 12, verse 48, that says, to whom much is given, much is required. We're a nation abundantly blessed. We have mountains and beaches, 
rivers and fertile plains. We have warm climates, cold climates. Sometimes those warm climates are cold too. We have resources that are the envy of the world. We're made up of citizens from around the globe that bring international culture and innovation to our shores. We're a nation built on conviction and on honor and pride and glory. We're a nation of liberty and truth, opportunity and spirit. We are abundantly blessed. To whom much is given, though, much is required. I want to challenge you this morning with three things that I believe are required of those who are given so much. Number one is a spirit of gratitude. No duty is more urgent than that of giving thanks. We are a nation who stands on the shoulders of men and women who've struggled, suffered, and sacrificed so that we might possess liberty and freedom. The attitude of gratitude affects us both body and soul. The Apostle Paul encouraged us to say, to give thanks in all things. Timothy said, first of all then, I urge you that supplications and prayers, intercessions and thanksgivings be made for all men. Henry Beecher said, a proud man is seldom a grateful man, for he never thinks he has enough. We are a nation abundantly blessed. Not only does gratitude affect the body, but it uh, affects the soul, but it affects the body. Listen to these 10 possible things that uh, are benefits of gratitude in the spirit. One, stronger immune system, better sleep habits, deeper relaxation, and for some, even more attractive when you have the spirit of gratitude in you. Increased creativity, and research even tells us that we have increased resilience as a result of gratitude in our hearts, being able to bounce back from difficulties. He is a wise man who does not grieve for the things which he does not have, but rejoices for those he has. The first thing I encourage you to remember is that we should be a nation of, full of gratitude, but we should also be a nation of courage. Joshua, when he was taking the reins of leadership in the book of Joshua, was told by God to be strong and courageous. The word strong there means a physical strength, able to endure. Courageous means able to, in the face of fear, act and do what needs to be done. Winston Churchill said, courage is going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. It takes courage to make tough decisions. When I think back to the days when this nation was forged, the men and women who were courageous were courageous because of their convictions. Convictions energized them to work and to learn and to plan and to struggle. They were also willing to die when necessary. Soldiers who died on the shores of Normandy, in the Ardennes Forest, places like Gettysburg and others, held, to them, held deep values and convictions that led them to fight for liberty. Courage is the willingness to be afraid and act anyway. Without courage, all virtues lose their meaning. Following the terrorist attacks of 9-11, President Bush said this, we will never waver, we will never tire, we will never falter, we will not fail, peace and freedom will prevail. It takes courage to stand on conviction and fight when necessary. A third and last thing to remember for those who are blessed is this, leadership. The people of this great nation and the state of Georgia need leaders who can inspire hope for the future. Listen to this picture of leadership from the book Forging the Warrior's Character, a book taught at West Point to Army officers. Command is about authority, about an appointment to a position, a set of orders granting title. Effective leadership is different. It must be learned and practiced in order for it to rise to the level of art. It has to do with the values internalized and the willingness to sacrifice and subordinate all other concerns, advancement, personal well-being, and even personal safety for the sake of others. So men of iron invested tremendous time, energy, and intellect in leadership development to ensure that those who had the privilege to be selected for command would approach their duties with a sense of reverence, trust, and the willingness to sacrifice all, if necessary, for those they led. 
You must love those you lead before you can be an effective leader. Our state needs leaders who can inspire greatness, men who will boldly lead with conviction, and women who will stand firm and strong on values that reflect the core beliefs of our founders. John F. Kennedy said, ask not what this country can do for you, but what you can do for this country. He inspired a nation to do the impossible, to put a man on the moon, a feat that seemed inconceivable to many at the time. A leader is one who knows the way, who goes the way, and who shows the way. We are a nation truly blessed, to whom much is given, much is required. Because we are so blessed, let me encourage you to let gratitude fill your life, be courageous in your walk, and to be a leader in your way. Would you join me for an invocation? Almighty God, we praise you and acknowledge your presence. We thank you for the abundant blessings on this nation, on this state, and today on this chamber. Would you give us that spirit of gratitude that sometimes escapes us because of our own pride? Help us not to be intoxic intoxicated with our successes and help us not to be too discouraged by our failures. Help us to be a people who move forward and seek your face who recognize you, honor you, praise you, and may we be a, a state that brings glory to your name. We ask all this in the name of the Lord. Amen.
Let me have the Senate's attention for just a moment. Would like to uh, recognize our doctor of the day before our special recognition. And to do so, I call upon the distinguished senator from the 42nd to introduce our doctor of the day. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, it's my honor to again introduce Frank Pickens, the uh, doctor of the day. This is his, every year I've been here, you've been here. So he's my, my neighbor in Druid Hills. He um, is, uh, practices at the Georgia Institute of Technology Student Health Services, and we're excited to have him back, doctor. Thank you so much, as always. You want to say a word to you? Yeah, please. Thank you, Senator Carter. It's, it's certainly an honor for me to be here today with you, and I want to thank you for your service to the state of Georgia. We certainly appreciate it. Have a good day. Gentlemen, I, I want to hear. That's all right. You're fine. You're good. Go ahead. And uh, uh, let me get the, um, all the senators to come in and take your seats. We're about to have a special uh, presentation of the National Guard. If you would, please uh, come forward and take your seats. The Secretary will read a resolution. Senate Resolution 775 by Senator Hill IV and others. A resolution recognizing January 27, 2014 as National Guard Day at the Capitol and for other purposes. Whereas the Georgia Department of Defense is a state agency in charge of coordinating and supervising all agencies and functions of the Georgia National Guard. And whereas the Georgia Department of Defense is located at Clay National Guard Center in Marietta, Georgia, and includes the Georgia Army National Guard, the Georgia Air National Guard, and the Georgia State Defense Force. And whereas the Georgia Department of Defense employs over 11,000 Army National Guard soldiers, 3,000 Air National Guard airmen, 850 State Defense Force members, and 460 state employees. And whereas Georgia's Army National Guard is the eighth largest in the nation, with training in more than 68 ho hometown armories and regional facilities across the state, this includes combat, combat support, and combat service support units. And whereas the Georgia State Defense Force is a volunteer unit of the Georgia Department of Defense, serving in support of the national and state constitution under direction of the governor and adjun adjutant general of Georgia, and whereas the selfless and heroic actions of the Georgia National Guard stand as a shining tribute to the strength of the human spirit 
and it is abundantly fitting and proper that the outstanding accomplishments of these remarkable and distinguished Georgians be appropriately recognized. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate that the members of this body commend the men and women of the Georgia National Guard for their strength, leadership, and courage, and their willingness to find meaning in something greater than themselves, and recognize January 27, 2014, as National Guard Day at the Capitol. That completes the order, Mr. President. Is there objection to adoption of the resolution? Chair hears none, and the resolution is adopted. It is a, a great honor to recognize the Georgia National Guard uh, here today in the Senate. Uh, it's very rare that many of us can say that we had the chance to serve with an uh, adjunct general. Um, and, you know, it's questionable how good he is, but uh, we at least got to <laughs> serve with him in the state Senate. Um, but uh, uh, General Butterworth has done a remarkable job, and uh, we are very, very honored to, to have him here, uh, and more importantly, uh, the Georgia National Guard. And, so many of those that are in the gallery uh, that are present today and those that are here with me as well. And we also have some that are, will be joining us uh, momentarily uh, via the internet as well. Uh, they are the oldest part of the National Armed Forces and they remind us of the tradition in the 13 original colonies that required all able armed men to train and be ready to defend their communities. The 460,000 men and women that make up today's National Guard comes from all walks of life, uh, white collar and blue collar, parents and teachers and students, uh, doctors, lawyers, business owners, and yes, even legislators. I can't believe they let them in, but <clears throat> they continue that tradition of voluntary service, uh, world-class training, and and constant uh, vigilance. As uh, you may know, uh, our Army Guard that was named the best Army Guard organization in the country by winning the 2013 Army Communities of Excellence Award. And our Air National Guard has continued uh, to win numerous outstanding unit awards and log in literally thousands of additional flying hours in combat and service to our nation. Today, the members of the Georgia Air National Guard, the Georgia Army National Guard, and the Georgia State Defense Force serve with honor and distinction across the globe. We owe them, their families, and the 5,000 civilian employees who serve with them our gratitude and support. Georgians have a long and storied history of doing more than their fair share for our nation's defense. Today, I encourage you to visit the Memorial Wall in the, rot in the Rotunda and uh, Sloppy Floyd Building as well, and take a moment to reflect on those from our state who had made the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, and now to speak to the resolution uh, in honoring, it is my honor now to recognize uh, the uh, very distinguished uh, National Guardsman himself, the Senator from the 4th. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, members of the Senate, the, the tradition of the militia and the National Guard is as old as this country. Uh, the militia that fought the Revolutionary War were part-time soldiers, farmers mostly, merchants, folks who won our independence against the regular armies of England and that tradition carries on today. And I think one of the skills that has been proven uh, through all these deployments in the last uh, 20 years has been the skills that they bring to the job of soldiering, the skills they bring from the civilian sector as well. Uh, we're very fortunate in Georgia to have a, a guard that has responded to the need and has grown steadily. And uh, there's some 16,000 men and women of the Georgia National Guard today represents the largest force that I can remember us having as well over the years. The bottom line though is it's a great deal for the state of Georgia for some seven to 10 million, think about this a minute now, for some seven to 10 million of investment of state dollars, we have a $700 million uh, federal expenditure that operates the Georgia National Guard both full-time and part-time. Uh, th there are some agencies in this state that have a small amount of state funds that operate and receive a tremendous in influx of federal money, but none as great as the National Guard. So for all the right reasons, 
for the for the dual mission that the National Guard serves, the state mission and the federal mission. Uh, we are well served in Georgia by the National Guard, and we're we're so fortunate to have one of our own as a commanding general. And I want to introduce him, and he's going to recognize the other members on the podium. But let me just say that we are also joined by members of the Senate who have a military background and have served as well. And I'm honored to be standing here with those those men as well. Uh, general Jim Butterworth is one of us, has uh, done an outstanding job as Adjutant General, and uh, I know he has some important things to say to you this morning. General, I want to present this resolution to you. Good morning. Truly an honor to be here. The very, very first thing I'm going to do is recognize our team because, as the president has just admitted, I'm not the I'm probably the weak link in the chain. I realized very early on that all I needed to do was get out of the way, unclip a few wings, and this organization would sure enough fly. And I can't tell you how honored I am to be on this team. General Joe Girard is our Army Commanding General. Major General Tom Moore is our Air Guard Commander. And uh, General Tom Danielson is our State Defense Force Commander. Along with them, I've got some folks up in the gallery that I'd like to recognize. Actually, four groups, uh, our Army National Guard members, our Air National Guard members, State Defense Force members, and the other folks that y'all need to never forget is the backbone of our organization, some of our state employees as well. Some of our old guard retirees are in the group as well. Please, all of you, please stand and be recognized. Thank you very, very much. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this to you, and I apologize, but I actually did this on purpose. There's one other group up there, and they're wearing a little bit of a different uniform, members of our Youth Challenge Academy. Be happy to visit with you any time about the success of this program. But the bottom line is that these folks have chosen to change their lives, and they're changing lives around them in the meantime. Members of our Youth Challenge Academy program, would you all please stand as well? I'll be very, very brief. I know you all have a lot of business to do, but the point that I want to make is, much like your team, our team, 85% of us, we're made up of part-time folks. We do this just like you're doing what you're doing today on a part-time basis. You have other jobs, other vocations. You come make a difference for the 10 million people in the state of Georgia, just like we do. And then, when the day is done, you take the uniform of this building, just like we do, you take that uniform off and you go back to your job. To that end, we probably think along the same lines of a certain battlefield. You all are doing battle on this front and on a lot of different fronts, just like you have heard from the, from the chairman and from Governor Cagle, we're doing battle as well. To that end, we've got some folks that are uh, coming to you via some technology from the other side of the world, if we could put those folks up, please. Um, they're doing battle over in Kabul, Afghanistan, part of the 48th Brigade. The history of the team goes back to 1825. The Macon Volunteers, that was their initial name. And now Colonel Randall Simmons, Sergeant Major, and, uh, and Colonel Dickerson, they're coming to you from Kabul, Afghanistan. Please welcome them into the Senate chambers. And hey, sir, thank you very much. Please go ahead, Colonel. All right. Lieutenant Governor Gagel, 
General Butterworth, General Moore, General Gerard, General Danielson, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, it is truly an honor for us to address you this morning. Colonel Randall Simmons, Commander of the 48th Brigade, on my right, I've got Command Sergeant Major Sean Lewis, our Brigade Command Sergeant Major, and on my left, Lieutenant Colonel Jeff Dickerson, our Brigade Deputy Commander. We want to thank you for your support of the National Guard and hosting this call today. We especially want to thank Senator Jack Hill for sponsoring today's resolution. Sir, your record of service in both the Georgia Air National Guard and uh, our state government speaks for itself. In the future, I hope to see you this fall at a Georgia Southern game as we uh, begin our dominance in the Sun Belt Conference. Who? <laughs> Go Eagles. Hey, we'd like to um, give you just a brief operational update of things going on in the 48th Brigade. We're in the final stages of assuming full responsibility of our brigade headquarters mission in Kabul. This mission is unique in that we are responsible for security in Kabul while transitioning bases to a, a host of uh, customers from Afghan security force partners, the Afghan government ministries, and U, uh, U.S. interagency departments. Not only are we involved in combat operations in Kabul, but, but we have elements in northern Afghanistan and Kuwait uh, performing a wide range of combat and combat support functions. If you didn't think we were busy enough, we also have elements of our brigade performing a security cooperation mission in Central America, commonly referred to as RAF, the Regionally Aligned Forces. We are partnering with security forces in El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras to build their capacity to counter transnational criminal activities, among other things. Um, I really appreciate you guys' support. Uh, your warriors here of Task Force Volunteer in Kabul and uh, Northern Afghanistan and those traveling to Central America couldn't be prouder to represent our great state uh, on an international stage. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, think back to the fall of 2001 when Georgia Army and Air National Guard units were some of the first deployed to this theater in support of the global war on terror. Since that time, upwards of 15,000 Georgia National Guardsmen have deployed in support of operations in Iraq and Afghanistan, 38 of whom paid the ultimate sacrifice. So it's only fitting that the Georgia National Guard currently has soldiers and airmen deployed here in the CENTCOM AOR during this historic transitional period. And we should note that Jeff's wife, Maria Dickerson, probably in the audience today, was part of one of those units. Who, again, thank you for your support of our soldiers and airmen, families and employers. Thank you for your recent focus on putting our guardsmen back to work. Keeping soldiers stable at home is just as important uh, component of readiness as anything else. So before we close, do you guys have anything else? Uh, yes, sir, I do. Uh, is Senator Balfour among you today, sir? Uh, we have a Senator special Balfour. Member, Senator Balfour. Uh, he's right here. There he happens to be. He just happens to be standing well, right well, here. I got a surprise for you, sir. Look what I found. Hey, Dad. Uh, <laughs> <there>. <laughs> uh, love you, miss you. Um, going to keep real busy here. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. All right, they're listening now. All right. Hey, I love you. I miss you. I may hear one piece. Uh, I'm staying really busy, and uh, I'll keep my head down. I promise. I'll get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> Look forward to seeing you back here soon. Ask him, ask him what his rank is. <laughs> <coughs> is, there a, is there a rank difference? Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. New promotion. Just a newly Sergeant promoted. Balfour. There you go. Newly promoted Sergeant Balfour. Good job, man. Thank you very, very much. And um, uh, Colonel Dickerson did mention that, uh, that Maria Dickerson, she's actually up here. She's my executive assistant, and uh, she's staying in touch with them on a daily basis. So uh, we certainly appreciate the family's service as well, and I think that's the point, that uh, for each one of these soldiers, almost 200 on this one example, and we have about 1,000 that are serving overseas and, and in other places around the world, there are families right here in the state of Georgia. So we definitely appreciate your prayers in that regard. Thank you all for this opportunity. Good job, all. Awesome. Well done. Good job. Yeah. That was a pretty good surprise, huh?
unanimous consents. Any senator wish to rise on a point of personal privilege? Chair recognizes. Senator from the 33rd, the Dean of the Senate, please give the senator your attention. Thank you, Mr. President, and ladies and gentlemen of the Senate. That's one of the most wonderful ceremonies we've ever had. I know it touched me, and I know it touched you all. I would like to ask one thing for you, and that is, if we could, can we have a round of applause for the United States Navy? I felt like we got out of that. <laughs> From old iron size to the USS Forrestal to the Nimitz class, uh, a lot of guys have invested their time and their lives in the United States Navy, and I was honored to be one of them. Just didn't want to leave our guys out. Let me say that I rose this morning for this reason, and that is there was a resolution I introduced last year that had to do with great Georgians of character. Now, this was discussed and decided by two children at in a school in Senator Tippin's district at Durham Middle School. It unanimously passed the Senate. The governor supported it, and it died in the House by a vote of actually 117 to 41. It was defeated. Now, let me tell you why it was defeated. There was some miscommunication about, about Georgia Day, Georgia Month, and celebrating Georgia as opposed to great Georgians of character uh, through history. We now have talked and communicated with the, the Georgia Historical Society, which is going to have a, a ceremony, I think, on, in, a, in just a few days, recognizing their, their efforts and their time. They have a two-week festival in Savannah every year, uh, a parade in Savannah. And uh, we've gotten all our communication straightened out. I understand the administration is helping us again. We're going to try to pass this this year uh, to honor those kids who have dealt in character education, because I'll tell you something. What, I, what I've seen in character education is the answer to a lot of problems. In fact, at that school, they've cut their problems and discipline by 80%. So I would ask that when I have that resolution tomorrow morning, please come and sign it with me. I'd like to have a unanimous effort by the State Senate of Georgia. Uh, these children deserved to be recognized. There were 400 of them here last year to receive a gubernatorial proclamation and there are 2,000 that are involved in this program out there. So please, please come by my desk, and let, or I'll try to come by yours and sign that with me so that we can show unity. And uh, I think the House will have better communications with them this year, too. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Senator. Chair, and I, Senator in 35th, for a point of personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. President. I tell you, this has been a beautiful red, white, and blue day already, isn't it? I mean, to hear people who are putting their life on the line for us every day in Afghanistan. Let's give them another hand. I want to give them another hand. <laughs> this morning, I had the opportunity of going to the Georgia Municipal Association breakfast. And, I, and yeah, 536 cities, incorporated cities, of course, out of our 159 counties in Georgia. And they were represented there with mayors and city council persons. And the greatest thing about the breakfast that, is that our president of the Senate addressed them and gave a very great oration. So let's give him a hand to our, he made us look good this morning till <laughs> I'm very proud. <laughs> and also I'm excited that the people from the 35th district, Douglas County, are with us today. And it's the second annual Douglas County Democratic Women Day at the uh, Capitol. And they're joined by the Democratic Party uh, Committee from Douglas County. So please join me. Please stand, uh, party members. See the pretty ladies up there? 
And um, the senator from the 30th and I would like to ask all the senators to give a warm Senate welcome. Thank you for being here today at your state capitol. Thank you. I yield the will. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator. Chair recognized Senator in the 49th, 49th for a point of personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the Senate, what do you have? What do you have? What do you have? The Georgia Councils. Did you say naked dog walking? I didn't say that. You said that. The Georgia Council of Public Libraries invites you for a hot dog today from the varsity down in room uh, 2.30. And the libraries are a special place to me. That's where I met my wife. I was the original library stalker. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the well. <laughs> Chair recognizes Senator in the 47th on a point of personal privilege. Please give the Senator your attention. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I'm not very good at math. One of the things I'll, I'll ask my friends in here to think for a second, they, uh, uh, everybody talks about numbers and dollars and cents. Said they, uh, one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is the second largest industry in our state is tourism. Tourism generates a billion dollars a week. Now just for y'all, think about a billion dollars a week that's a thousand million. Said they uh, do it any way you want to. Said they, uh, uh, but it is it is great to be in Georgia. Uh, on your desk today, you'll see the uh, Georgia Magazine with Gone with the Wind. I'm proud to, to serve in, in uh, the chair for economic development and tourism. You've got great places. But I'm running a bus campaign tonight to get people to the Georgia Tourism Celebration over uh, at the History uh, Center tonight. So if you'd like to go with me tonight, please let me know. It was on your desk last week. If you didn't RSVP, I'll be glad to carry you. It's proud for me to follow behind the, the great senator from the 53rd and our majority leader uh, in this position. Stop and see Georgia. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Chair recognize Senator 25th on a point of personal privilege. Please give the distinguished senator from Butts County your attention. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to uh, recognize uh, one of my fine schools as in my district, Georgia Military College. The football team, the junior college, is here today uh, uh, visiting with the governor, and, and they're being recognized for finishing uh, national champs, runner-ups uh, in junior college, and they finished 11-1. and one and and uh, had an outstanding season, and Burt Williams continues to put out great athletes down at our, our fine school in Milledgeville, Georgia. I yield well. Thank you, Senator. Very proud, very proud. Consent calendar. We have a consent calendar of privilege resolutions that are before you that should be on your desk. And the question is on the consent calendar of privilege resolutions. Is there objection with <coughs> the secretary can read the caption of the uh, just the uh, consent calendar. We'll just, we'll just read them for you in case you don't have them on your desk. Go ahead, just, just yeah, yep. SR. Senate Resolution 789, uh, Shoal Creek Water Reclamation Facility, rec uh, recognized by Senator 34th. All the way down. Senate Resolution 790 by the Senator of the 45th, uh, recognized Shaw Industries Group. Senate Resolution 791 by Senator of the 50th, recognized February 4th, 2014 as Equine Youth Day. Senate Resolution 792 uh, by Senator of the 45th, recognized Old Suwannee Baptist Church. 
Senate Resolution 793 by the Senator of the 45th, recognized February 18, 2014 as Thrombosis Awareness Day. Senate Resolution 794 by Senator of the 45th, recognized Georgia State University's Legislative Health Policy Cert Certificate Program. Senate Resolution 795 by Senator of the 45th, recognized February 7, 2014 by Go Red Day. Senate Resolution 796 by Senator of the 51st, recognized January 29, 2014 as University of North Georgia Day. Senate Resolution 797 by the Senator of the 48th, recognized your uh, Ivan Figueroa. Uh, Senate Resolution 798 by the Senator of the 48th, recognized Hebron Kim. Senate Resolution 799 by the Senator of the 21st, recognized January 30, 2014, as Health Information Technology Day. That completes the order, Mr. President. Is there objection? Without objection, the privilege resolutions are therefore adopted. Chair recognizes the majority leader. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the Senate stand adjourned till 10 a.m. Tuesday, January 28th. 10 a.m. January 28th. Tuesday, January 28th. Read the announcements. Rules will be meeting upon adjournment and 450 cap. Judiciary will be meeting at 307 CLOB at 2 p.m. Transportation will be meeting at in the MES at 3 p.m. Science and Technology will be meeting at 3.07 CLOB at 4 p.m. There will also be a special judiciary meeting today at 125 at 1 p.m. Is that 125 cap? Is that 125 cap? 125 in the cap. That completes the order, Mr. President. Chair, recognize Senator from the 4th, the distinguished appropriations chairman. Please give the Senator your attention. Thank you, Mr. President. Two things quickly. Uh, as you know, the House passed the amended budget on Friday, and uh, the subcommittees of appropriation are going to be working this week uh, towards the completion of a report on Thursday. And I uh, will be uh, meeting to put together the budget on Friday and be voting it out of committee probably Monday afternoon or Tuesday. Be voting on the floor next week sometime. I say this to say if you've got some interest in the amended budget, uh, we'll be posting the times of any of the committee meetings, the subcommittee meetings that'll be having. We're glad to have you attend and, and participate if that's something you'd like to do. You might want to talk to the chairman of that committee if you have an interest as well. And uh, just let you know that this process is ongoing. It's going to move, move on by this, this week. Secondly, uh, in your office this morning, you should have a small loaf of cinnamon bread from Effingham County. Aren't many counties in the state that's got graveyards dating from the 1700s, but Effingham County is one of them. You'll also see 100 to 125 of great constituents of mine from Effingham County wandering around the, the halls. Of, uh, it won't hurt you a bit to say something nice about me to them and try to help me get reelected. <laughs> we are uh, mostly, mostly alive, but, but uh, we thank you so much for for uh, uh, your support and, and, and the other thing to remember is there is a reception this afternoon at the depot uh, and there'll be some, some really home, home uh, made type goodies there I think you'll enjoy so uh, we look forward to seeing you down there today. Thank you Mr. President. Any other announcements? Please don't forget your pages uh, if you have any pages today get your pictures done prior to uh, departing the chamber. The majority leader has moved that we stand adjourned until tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. All of those in favor will say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. no. The ayes clearly have it. We stand adjourned.